Hi, I'm Dan Ferrugia and welcome. The other day I was doing some practice in here, uh, preparing for a gig and in the process of practicing, as usually happens, you know, I find something in what I'm trying to do that doesn't quite feel right, doesn't feel right to play, doesn't feel right to listen to. So what you heard me play at the start of this video was one of those exact things, one of those exact two beat, in this case, phrases that I needed to sort of put aside to work on specifically. So I just want to go through the process that I take when I have to kind of repair an inaccuracy in a groove or just generally when I'm working on a groove. This is how I go about doing it. So let's get into it. So the groove that you heard me play is really just two beats long at this point. It was really part of a six beat groove or a groove that was in six four, but there was just two beats in it that I wasn't happy with. In particular, it was um, a relationship between the bass drum and snare drum. Now, if you watched enough of my videos, you know that I keep banging on about the weak relationship between the left hand and the right foot if you are right footed, right handed. So this is just a, another way that I went about addressing this issue. So what I'm going to do first is play that groove for you. In fact, as I said, it's just a two beat idea. So this is it. One, two, one, two. So the groove that I'm playing is a layered groove and so what that means is that there are multiples of sounds occurring at one time. So at various points within that bar, the snare drum and the bass drum will be playing together along with the hi-hat perhaps or it might be just the snare and hi-hat together or the snare drum and bass drum together. So in order to make this groove feel good or anything like this feel good, we must make sure that the unisons that we're playing are right on top of each other, they're stacked in a, in, in a clean line. No no flams between any voices. And so that's really what I'm trying to eradicate with this particular practice method. So the very first thing I do when I go to practice something like this is remove my right hand part. The right hand, in my opinion, is kind of like the glue that sort of bonds the other limbs. So by removing the right hand, which I also call the mediator, uh, it exposes instantly any inaccuracies between the bass drum and the snare drum. But what I'm going to do even ahead of that is just practice. So the first thing I do is just practice the snare drum on its own, but with the left foot playing eighth notes or quavers. Now, if you're not used to using your left foot, do it. Like you have to start using your left foot. If you're a right footed drummer and you're using your left foot to play the hi-hat, you really must get this this part of your body active. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play eighth notes with my hi-hat and I'm going to play the snare drum part on its own. So just to give you um, an idea of what the snare drum is playing, the rhythm is this. One, two, one, two. One. To move on from that, we have to add dynamics. So what I'm going to do is play that backbeat on beat two as a rim shot, that nice big fat sound. And then all the other notes are going to be played as ghost strokes. So probably a little softer than where I was playing them just then. The other thing I like doing when I practice these days is setting the metronome to play the second and fourth sixteenth note of every beat. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to give you a count in so that you know where the downbeat is. Eighth notes on the hi-hat and just that snare drum pattern. One, two, one, two. Now, I'll generally play that for about three or four minutes, but if it takes longer to make that sit more accurately with the metronome, then I'll play it for longer than that. But just generally speaking, four minutes. Let's make that a number. 
four minutes. The next thing I will do is take the same idea by using the hi-hat foot to play eighth notes against this particular click, but now I'll play the, the bass drum part just to see how that feels. Now, if I feel that the bass drum part is actually quite accurate, then I probably won't practice the bass drum part on its own. But in this case, I'm gonna demonstrate this just to see if uh, firstly it is accurate enough and if it's not accurate enough, I'll just keep practicing it. So the bass drum rhythm is this. One, two, one, two. So I'm going to do that with a metronome now. I'll count you in and then I'll start with the left foot. One, two, three, four. So I'll do that for four minutes. So, so far we're up to eight minutes. Snare drum and hi-hat, bass drum and hi-hat, and then I'm going to put both of those things together along with the hi-hat. So remember at this stage we're still resting the right hand. One, two, one, two. So I'll probably do that for another four minutes. Again, I'm just using this time to solidify all of these inaccuracies and just getting the limbs to work together against the left foot. So far we're up to 12 minutes of practice. So then the final thing for me is to add the hi-hat. Now in this particular instance I'm opening the hi-hat on the and of two and the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm throwing my focus onto where the hi-hat actually closes. So the hi-hat is obviously closing with my left foot on beat one which is in unison with the bass drum. So again those little inaccuracies between the left foot and the right foot can occur so be aware of that. And I guess ultimately what I'm saying is to practice with details in mind, like really just taking care of the details. When you think about all your favorite drummers, the ones that just sound incredible, they, they sound incredible because they took care of the details. So if you concentrate on the, the, the smaller aspects of all of this kind of work, then generally the, the, the larger picture is greatly improved. So uh, really, really play with details in mind, really focus on those details. Anyway, here's the uh, hi-hat part along with the snare drum and bass drum part. And at this point now the left foot is doing nothing except opening the hi-hat on the and of two and then closing it again on beat one. And I'm gonna do this with the metronome again. Here we go. One, two, one, two. So by the time I get to that stage, I'm hoping that all the limbs are working together. And then beyond that, I might just set a metronome for five minutes or even 10 minutes and just play that groove and try to get it uh, feeling as accurate and as hypnotic as I possibly can get it. So um, we're probably up to about 16 minutes, but if you want to extend the full version of the groove out to 20 minutes, go for it. But the idea is just we're building strength with each limb individually, making sure that those individual limbs are accurate before we put the whole thing together. Uh, just going into detail, getting that microscope out and just finding where the inaccuracies are.
So there you go, there's an approach I take to practicing a groove, especially a busy, dense groove, in this case a layered groove. Um, I would suggest that you start slow. Um, in this case I'm practicing at 80 beats per minute, but I have slowed it down to 60 beats per minute, and even slower than that if I need to. So I would suggest just concentrating on accuracy, don't worry about the speed, the speed will come. Like if you need to get this groove at a certain tempo, you'll get there, but you want to get there with it sounding great so that you don't have to go back and work on it all again. So you don't want to do that. So uh, take your time, be patient. This is a great approach. It works, it works for me. And um, hopefully you'll be able to implement this approach in your playing and make it work for you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, subscribe and uh, remember to hit that notification bell icon thing so that you know when I've uploaded a video. So until then, Enjoy yourself, happy practice, and uh, I will, happy practice? Anyway, I'll see you all soon. Bye.